In this video tutorial, I'm going to take you through the process of creating an automatic table of contents within Microsoft Word for Mac. Now, if you look at the document I have on screen, you'll see as we scroll down, we have lots of placeholder text, images, and what I've done throughout this document is I've inserted little pieces of text here for heading one, heading one, heading two, and heading three and four. So I've purposely done this so that we can construct a table of contents based on these headings. And I've named them this way so that we can see whether they are subheadings from the previous section. Now, what you might be inclined to do if you're not familiar with automatic table of contents within Microsoft Word is you might actually go and create one yourself. So you might write like heading one, then perhaps tab along and say, okay, that lives on page um, two. And then we have um, heading one also lives on page two. Then we have a heading two that lives on, let's say in this case, page three. And you'll see the formatting slightly out here. So we might copy this and then perhaps, um, let's just apply standard normal styling to this. So you could construct your table of contents manually like this, which is what a lot of people do. The problem is that if you change your headings, so let's say this then gets called section one and it gets moved to page three, it will not automatically update. So you could go down and you could change this heading here, but you'll need to come up to here, you'll need to change it here and also modify the page. And this can lead to a lot of mistakes within your document or if you've moved things around, you may not notice that the table of contents hasn't been updated. So what you can do in Microsoft Word is you can build a table of contents automatically. And that allows you to then make changes to the headings and the positions on pages within your document and then simply click one button to update your entire table to reflect those changes. And the way that this works is it makes use of these styles. So let's scroll down and let's find our first heading. Now, obviously in your document, you wouldn't normally call a heading, heading one, but we're going to work with that today. Now we can either select this whole heading or we can just click anywhere within it or outside of it as long as it's on the same line. And from the home tab, we're going to choose styles. Now there are lots of styles here. These are predefined for this particular document. They can be modified. And if you want to learn more about how we modify styles and work with styles, I've got a separate video, which I'll link to in the card above and the description below. But what I want to do just here is I want to apply the heading one styling to this piece of text. So when I choose heading one, you'll see it applies it to that text. Now this one's heading two, so we're going to apply the heading two style, which is very similar, but maybe just slightly smaller. So you'll see here this is size 18, whereas this one is 16. If we scroll down, I'm going to locate the next heading one. I'm going to go to styles and apply heading one to that one. We'll do the same with this one here, just making sure that we either select the text or click on the same line as the text. Let's make this heading two, and we'll do the last few in this document. So we've got heading three, which you'll see is a completely different style. So not only is it size 14, it's different color. And let's do heading four, which is size 12, and a completely different font as well as color, as you can see here. So now we have applied the styles to these headings, we need to go ahead and we need to build our table of contents. Now I'm just gonna do it on this first page. So all I do is click, and then we're going to go to the references tab at the top, and then click on table of contents. Now you'll see within here, you get a couple of different options. So you get classic, contemporary, formal, or modern, and then you can scroll down and you'll see there are some others within here. Now what I want to do is I want to choose classic. So when I click on classic, it's going to do all the hard work for me. It's going to scan the document, have a look to see where I've used any styles for headings ones, twos, threes, and fours, and it's going to build my table of contents for me. So let's single click on classic, and there's my table of contents automatically built for me. Not only does it know when we've used a heading one, but it knows what page it's on, it knows that heading two is a subheading to heading one, so it indents it slightly. Again, it highlights the page. And then even down to level three, so we've got a heading three here on page six. We did also include in this document a heading four, but that hasn't appeared in the table of contents. And that's because we need to modify the table of contents to include this. 
So now that we've looked at how to insert a table of contents, let's take a look at how we can modify it. Now the easiest way to do this is to click inside your table and then simply go up to the top here and what you can do is you can remove your table of contents or you can simply just go to table of contents here and then go down to custom. You can then make changes and it will ask you if you want to update your table and replace it with the new version, which is what we're going to do. You'll see there's also the remove table of contents option here, but let's just go for custom table of contents. Now within here, you can choose a different format. So you can stick with your from template. You can change it to classic, distinctive, fancy. There's a couple of good options in here. Let's keep it simple though. Let's just leave it as from template. Now you'll see here where we have the different levels. We have show level set to five. Now the default is usually three, which is why if you use one of these options, you only see up to heading level three. If we want to guarantee we can see heading level four or even down to heading level five, we can increase this to level five. Let's leave it as show levels to four. And we can see in this preview how our table is going to look. Now let's look through some of these options here. So the first one, show page numbers. Do you want to see the page numbers on the right hand side? If you turn this off, they will not be visible, but usually a table of contents will have the page numbers. So let's leave that one on. And then you'll see you can choose to align your page numbers to the right hand side as they are here. Or if you deselect this one, it basically just sticks them next to your heading like this, which doesn't look great. Even though we have numbers in our heading, even if we didn't, these would still not look too good if they were bunched up against this text. So I'm going to align page numbers to the right, and then I'm gonna change the tab leader to a solid line. So you can have a solid line, you can have a dotted line, or you can have no line. So the user can just look across. Let's leave these as a solid line like this. And then finally, you'll see use links instead of page numbers. Now this one, if you uncheck it, means that you can't click on the page numbers to automatically take the user to that part of the document. So essentially, if somebody's viewing this as an electronic document, then it works as hyperlinks. So I always just leave this one turned on. Now, before we click OK, we're going to go into modify. Now modify allows you to modify the headings within your table. So you'll see here, this is table of contents style one. Then we've got heading two, heading three, heading four. And you'll notice the preview changes slightly for these. So it gets smaller with each heading. Now heading four, if I want to maybe update heading four only, I can go down to modify and I can make some changes. So let's just for the purposes of this, let's make heading four come out bold and let's make it orange, okay? Just like that and you can rename it up here you can link it to a style as well but I'm going to leave it as it is and choose OK and then you will see the little preview here as updated we're going to click on OK and then in this preview we can see that heading 4 is now in bold and it is orange now one thing you can also do is you can click on options and this allows you from within here you'll see that you can add additional levels so if I wanted to add in heading level five, I could insert five here. It puts a little tick next to heading five and you'll see it will update here to now include heading level five. So it's another way of adjusting this, although it is easier doing it here. So now that we have customized our table of contents, let's click on OK. And it's going to ask us if we wish to replace the table we have already in play, which of course we do. So let's go to yes. And we now have a newly updated version of our table of contents. So we have all the page numbers down here and you'll notice if you click on any headings, it takes you to that page. So we can go all the way back up, we can click on heading four and it will take us to heading four within the document. What I want to do now is I want to demonstrate how you can make changes to either the label or the heading and the page numbers and then how you can update the table to reflect these changes. So where we have heading one here, let's scroll down and let's change this. So instead of it saying heading one, I'm going to change that to section one. And then this one here, I'm going to call this one section two. And then let's go back down and let's have a look. This heading one, this lives on page four. I'm going to insert a few page breaks here so that it now lives on page nine, which means all of the other headings that come after that have also moved down three pages too. 
And if I scroll to the top of the page, you'll notice that the page numbers and headings have not updated, okay? What all we need to do is click on update table and you'll see those changes have now been made. So this is now section one and section two. And then heading one now lives on page nine instead of page six. And if we go down and maybe let's remove this page, so we'll nudge them up one or two, we can come back up once again, we can update our table and you'll see the changes have been made there. So if you are somebody who has been constructing a table of contents manually, then have a go at creating it automatically, making use of heading styles, because you're guaranteed to save yourself a huge amount of time and effort.